We missed out on March Madness. Now we have baseball without fans. So what about football in the fall? Yeah, COVID-19 means you can't take me out to the ball game. We're really striking out on sports. And this is Chick to Chick. So, Flora, you know that we are a sports family. If it's not soccer, track, uh, swimming, gymnastics, diving, you name it. And so it's so weird for us as a family to not have sports to even watch on TV right now. It is very weird because of COVID-19. Everything pretty much came to a screeching halt and everything stopped. Now, slowly, some of the sports are coming back into play. You know, they're playing golf without spectators. And I just find this so weird that they're playing Major League Baseball games without fans in the stand. And I'm still wondering what is going to happen with football and so many other sports. I mean, I feel bad for these kids. They just want to play. Yeah, they don't just want to play. Some of them really need to get out in front of colleges and see what they're doing. Some kids are in college and they want to finish up college looking to go pro. I mean, there's so much to talk about when it comes to this. It really is throwing a wrench in the plans of a lot of people. We're striking out on sports. And the big question is, what's going to happen in the future? Joining us today, we have Greg Pickle. He's a sports reporter with Penn Live in Harrisburg. Greg, I can't imagine, first of all, the challenges of being a sports reporter during a time when for a while we really didn't even have sports. So what are you doing as a reporter right now? Yeah, it's been a lot of focus on COVID. It's so good to be with you both. But yeah, it's been a lot of focus on COVID and the coronavirus, of course. That's really, uh, you know, the burning topic, of course, across society right now. And it's starting to bleed into the sports world as teams get back and there's no fans and they're testing players. Some leagues doing it every day. Some leagues doing it every other day. Um, Some leagues are in a bubble and everyone's kind of on a campus somewhere in a hotel and other leagues are flying all over the country. And then you have football that's trying to start training camp and see how far they can go um, or where things will stand before they even get started. So a lot of decisions still to be made, but yeah, it's been a lot of focus on coronavirus, just like everybody else at this point in society. Um, We've been trying to keep up with it and the news seems to break and change just about every day. Yeah, it just keeps constantly changing. You know, we missed out on March Madness, no basketball at all. Now we have golf without spectators and baseball without fans. And I think that is really bizarre. How do you think the players are handling all of this? And yeah, end? I'm sure it's unique because they're so used to having that energy. A couple of them talked about it during opening weekend where it's uh, it's been bizarre because, you know, I think that everyone's played either it's, you know, the, the younger levels or the older levels, whatever. Everyone's played in front of a small crowd, but they've never played in front of no crowd. And so uh, they are pumping in the crowd noise and trying to uh, make it a little bit more of a lively atmosphere. But I'm sure for some guys more than others, it is tough to not have that uh, vibe from the fans to feed off of and the yelling and screaming and booing and carrying on and everything else. So, yeah, it seems like, uh, obviously I think everyone just wants to play and as uh, fans and reporters, everybody just wants to watch them play. So they're willing to accept whatever, uh, you know, whatever stipulations need to be in place for that to happen. But it certainly is strange. There's no doubt about that. So a lot of the fans are actually young kids and they're either, you know, elementary school, middle school, or even the high schoolers. And really now the time when you guys start to talk to those local high school teams and find out what their season's going to be like coming up. And of course the kids that are looking forward to potentially playing in college, you yeah. know, and they need to get that information out to potential college coaches. What are you seeing going on right now from youth sports and into high school? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, again, everybody just wants to play. Everybody just wants to have a season. Everyone wants to get back to quote unquote normal, but it's a challenge. Uh, We've seen multiple schools have to stop workouts for a time being in either one sport, multiple sports or all sports because uh, a player or two was either exposed to somebody who may have had the coronavirus or had symptoms similar to the coronavirus or what have you. So it's been tough. Everyone's trying to do the best they can to work out in small groups and of course wear a mask while they do that and sanitize the weight room and sanitize the 
the football or the tennis ball or the basketball in the best way that you can. Um, but it's a challenge. It's really hard to uh, not only, uh, you know, again, get most or all of your team together. It's hard enough to do that. And then you got to keep everybody distant and safe and so on and so forth. So it's been tough, but it sounds like, uh, you know, again, most, some schools have had to slow down. Other schools have been able to stay on the same path. So that's been good to see. Um, but there's no question that, uh, you know, for the kids who are looking for scholarships and things like that, um, they have to do everything virtually. I mean, everything can be recorded and sent in the coaches and that's helpful. It doesn't replace being able to go to a college campus, for example, and showing a, a coach what you can do in person. But uh, that's the best some of these kids have right now. And the, the seniors who are planning on doing this, uh, using this summer as a chance to get scholarships are certainly impacted the most. Um, and everyone can just do the best they can with uh, recordings and things like that. Uh, to hopefully show what they can do. And then uh, obviously the fall and if we have sports in the fall will be a big time for that as well. Yeah, the, it's great that they are starting to think outside the box and doing yep. what you had said that they're actually recording and, they, and sending videotapes uh, to colleges. And speaking of college, you know, I still in my mind, I'm thinking like Penn State game. I mean, that's yep. tradition around here and the whole tailgating in the atmosphere and you know you say the players feed off that energy from the crowd how do you have like a Penn State whiteout game without anybody in the stand I can't imagine how this is going to go off I can't either and I mean we still don't even know how many fans or if Penn State will even be able to have fans at their games and I mean, looking around the state, you know, when there's no fans at a Pirates game or no fans at a Phillies game, I'm hard pressed to understand how there could be fans at a Penn State game or a Pitt football game or a Temple football game. So we'll see. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, of course, but it seems fairly unlikely. And I don't know how they're going to make it work either. Um, you know, the one thing that all parties are going to have to decide on is even if some Big Ten teams have fans and some don't. Uh, they're going to have to come to agreements about crowd noise and the fake crowd noise and how much of that are you allowed to pump in and how loud can it be and all that. So there are so many things to figure out. We don't even have a start time yet for the college football season. I mean, we know that the Big Ten's canceled non-conference games. That gives them some flexibility to either start at the beginning of September or the end of September, but they haven't made that call. And so um, but it's going to be interesting for sure. And the governor, Governor Wolf here in Pennsylvania and the health department secretary, Dr. Rachel Levine will eventually have to make that their call too. When it comes to fans in the stands, I know Penn state certainly wants fans in the stands, but we'll see if it actually works out that way. Again, just like with high school sports, everyone just wants to play. And so whatever rules have to be in place, including potentially no fans will be accepted if that gets everyone on the field this fall. It's definitely a tough and challenging time. And, um, you know, we are season ticket holders at Penn State. We know that they had talked about allowing just those folks come in. And, um, you know, to me, I have a daughter that graduated. I have a daughter that's there. And it's in the university. There's students. The students yeah. should be there cheering on the student athletes, you know, and that, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah. I'm sure you can agree, Greg, that this is a time where everybody needs to have some patience and know that uh, sports will resume in some capacity. But right now, we got to take what we can get, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we started with what? Golf and NASCAR. And then we got baseball. And the MLS is playing. The WNBA is playing. Uh, the NHL and the NBA will be in action before long. The NFL and hopefully college football will be too. So yeah, you're hundred percent right. You got to take what you can get at this point and realize that interruptions in play are going to be the way of uh, the nature of things. Uh, if they're going to continue to uh, a season in any sport. And I think the leagues and the events that have bubbles or, um, you know, a place where everyone goes to stay that's there and they get tested and it's kind of the quarantined and isolated all by itself. I think they have a better chance of having a prolonged season than the sports that have to fly around, but the sports that have to fly around or drive, whatever they can work too. Um, you're just going to see some interruptions, I think, and you might be planning on going to that, uh, you know, planning to go watch that game or go to a party to, to follow this event. And it might be canceled. It might be postponed. And I think that's going to be a reality of, uh, the high school sports season, the college sports season, and the pro sports season. I just think we're going to have to realize that uh, there are going to be days when too many players are sick or a certain area uh, isn't welcoming visitors, whatever. Um, there's going to be some rules and things in place that we've never even had to think of before, and some might have to be made up on the fly. So, um, yeah, you're right. Patience and a willingness to adjust are going to be important at any level of sport uh, as we get through the rest of 2020.
All right. So one final question very quickly. Do you think we're going to see professional football in the fall? I do. Yes. I, I believe the fact that the players can bargain for the health and safety protocols that they want and the league can basically say, uh, yes, no, or let's meet in the middle. I think those two factors will make uh, an NFL season uh, happen this fall. Now, will there be delays? Will there be games that are forfeited? Yeah, probably. But I do think we'll see an NFL season. Absolutely. All right. Hey, Greg, great information. Thanks so much for coming on this podcast. It's such a difficult situation because really it changes not every day, but every minute. And as you pointed out, a game is, is scheduled and then you've got players who are sick and it gets canceled. So it's really a fluid situation. And I think you hit on a very important word, patience. We all have to just be patient here and see how this whole thing plays out. Yes, it was so great being on. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Greg. We have to be patient, but, you know, I think that's tough to try to explain to a child, uh, you know, a six, a seven, an eight-year-old child, that you just have to be patient um, for when their sports is going to resume. It's tough, Carrie. Yeah, it is. And then just, uh, you know, for the older kids and even adults, we look forward to having our weekends, either tailgating or anything around sports. And really, we just have to be, um, you know, more mindful that there's a lot of things out there that are going to change and we just got to roll with the punches. It's just the way it is. Yeah, it, it'll resume at some point, but we just have to be patient. So we love the fact that you all have tuned in. If you want to reach out to us, we're all over social media. You can contact us on any of those platforms. You can also go to our website, chicktochick.com. And at the very top, there's a little tab that says contact and that's how you can contact us. What do you want to hear us chirp about? We'd love to know. And we will be back next week to chirp about another topic.